My name is Carly Fields from News from the Wetland, and I'm standing on the banks of Lytle Creek in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Today, a group of students from McFadden School of Excellence are investigating this stream. Let's talk to them and find out just what they are doing. Hello, what is your name? My name is Mason Edmondson. It looks like you guys are doing some very scientific work down here. What is going on? Well, we come down here almost every week to do water chemistry tests. We are trying to find out if Lava Creek's water is clean or healthy, uh, or if there might be some problems with the water here. Water chemistry, that sounds complex. What exactly are you testing for? Let's ask my class to find out. Temperature. pH. Dissolved oxygen. Turbidity. I asked some of my students to tell me more about these water chemistry tests, and this is what they had to say. Checking the temperature of a stream is simple but very important. Streams in Tennessee should never be very warm. In fact, in the month of March, they should be rather cold. Just put the thermometer into the water for about 30 seconds to a minute, then pull it out and quickly read it. If the water is too warm, then we know there is a problem. Sometimes power plants or factories release hot water into a stream or river causing the temperature to rise, which can be very bad for fish and other animals living in the water. Next, we tested the pH. pH tells us is if a liquid is acidic or basic and is measured on a scale of 0 through 14. Liquids with a pH near 0 are acidic and may taste sour, like lemon juice or vinegar. Liquids with a pH near 14 are basic and feel slippery like soap, baking soda, or an ammonia. Pure water has a pH of 7, right in the middle, and 7 is about where we want the water in this stream to be. Using chemistry kits made by Lamote, the tests are simple. We fill a test tube to 10 milliliters, add one pH tablet, and flip the tube over and over until the tablet dissolves. Once it dissolves, we just match the color to the chart. And voila! The color tells us that the pH of Lytle Creek is around 7. Just right. Things that can change the pH include acid rain, runoff from mines, and the type of rock found in the stream. Measuring a stream's dissolved oxygen levels can tell a lot about the stream's overall health. In order for animals that have gills to live in water, there must be an adequate amount of dissolved oxygen. In this case, we want the test to show a high number. We tested for dissolved oxygen using the same Lamoda kits that we use for pH. However, this test uses a smaller tube and must be filled all the way to the top with no air bubbles inside. Any air bubbles left inside the tube will give you bad results. So fill it up, add two tablets, flip the tube over until the tablets dissolve, wait five minutes, and then check the results. Sometimes, dissolved oxygen levels can increase simply from the splashing of waves or riffles and can decrease from too many dead or dying plants such as algae. The last test that we conducted was a turbidity test. Turbidity means how clear or how silty and muddy a stream is. A stream with high turbidity would have a lot of dirt, silt, or other sediments floating in the water and would look cloudy, not clear. To do this test, we used a transparency tube. After finding a place where the stream had not been disturbed, so there was no dirt stirred up into the water, we filled the transparency tube all the way to the top. Then we checked to see if the black and white disc at the bottom of the tube was visible. If not, we began draining the water from the tube until the disc was visible. And then we stopped the water. Check the measurement on the side of the tube to get a value from the for the stream's turbidity. If your stream has high turbidity, then something is happening upstream that is causing extra mud and silt to enter your stream, such as farming or construction. In addition to water chemistry, scientists that are studying a stream will look to see which animals are living it in that stream. However, they usually aren't looking for fish or tortoise turtles, they are looking for tiny animals called macroinvertebrates. 
What in the world are macroinvertebrates? An invertebrate is any animal that does not have a backbone. In fact, they have no bones at all, like worms, snails, bugs, butterflies, spiders, crawfish, crabs, and octopus. Macroinvertebrates are small, but still big enough to be seen with our eyes. So, we don't need a microscope. Why do scientists look for macroinvertebrates? Because they can tell us how healthy and clean a stream is, or if it is polluted. Some microinvertebrates can only live in clean water, while others can survive in heavily polluted, dirty water. Most of these are insects, like flies, that live underwater as larvae until they grow up to be an adult, flying through the air. Three of the most sensitive or pollution intolerant animals are stoneflies, mayflies, and caddisflies. There are many other good microinvertebrates, but these three always indicate good, clean water. Hopefully, we will find some here at Lyle Creek. To find and collect microinvertebrates, we use D-nets as seen in our hands. Placing the D-net firmly against the bottom of the stream, we flipped rocks at it in front of the net, allowing the rushing water to swirl and sweep the insects into our net. Working with a scene usually takes more than one person. In this case, we held this scene against the creek bed and our friends used their feet or hands to stir up the rocks and gravel on the bottom of the stream, causing the animals to get caught in the scene. Here in Lytle Creek, we have found mayflies, damselflies, dragonflies, crawfish, snails, scud, and dragonflies. One crawfish even had a large clutch of eggs under her tail. Because we found mayflies in the stream, we know that it must be pretty clean. They would not be here if the water was too polluted. However, there is a better way to tell if your stream is healthy or not. You can give it a score called a biotic index, or an index of biological integrity. To show this, we did a very simple version of the biotic index in our classroom. Thank you for watching this episode of News from the Wetlands and Murphy Squirrel Discovery Center at Murphy Springs. To help protect Murphy Squirrel's water sources, contact the Stones River Watershed Association or your local or uh, your local watershed association and take action your future is in your water <laughs>